Hello, I'm Hans Parchment. You're watching Talawa TV with Crystal Davis. Golden Ricketts, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I am well. You've made my night. Before we get started, please go ahead and big up the greatest parish in Jamaica. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. So um, I'm going to big up St. Thomas because I was born there. And I'm also going to big up St. Saint, Saint Andrew because I grew up there. I love that. I'll take that. 14.94, game's record. Um, you weren't playing about tonight, were you? No, I definitely knew that the girls were coming out here to fight, so I had to bring my A game and war them. What got you going? Was it the cold or was it something else? It's the cold. I like competing in the cold for some strange reason, but then after the first jump, it, I feel like it got even colder and then the breeze started changing, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what next? What's next for you in terms of achievement? Because this is your greatest career medal, isn't it? Yes. Um, apart from the World Championships, yes, this is my first um, gold. gold. So um, what's next? I have the Monaco Diamond League next week and I'm also going to be participating at the NACAC Championships in Bahamas. Amazing stuff. And how does it feel to inspire the little kids in St. Thomas? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them with their eyes gripped to the screen saying, I want to be like Golden Ricketts. Yes, definitely. I hope to be an inspiration to them. I hope they see themselves in me. If them foot long, them can try to try the triple jump. You know, if them slim, them can try the triple jump or even high jump. What if them have short foot? If them have short foot, then can try to cast a ball foot short too. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. My Talawas, good afternoon, good evening, and possibly good morning. All depends on where you're based in the world. Let me know how you guys are doing in the comment section. Please do be get friendly with that comment section there, guys. It's there for a reason. Hit the like button and drop a comment. Let me know how your week is going. I am heading towards Thursday, steadily heading towards um. Closer and closer to Thursday, I should say. It's 11.35 for me here in London. So let me know how everyone is. And we're going to be getting into the show. I realize that YouTube is notifying you guys late um, with when you hit the notification bell. Apparently, a few of you get the um, notification literally as I'm about to close off on the show. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it slow and then just build my way up to my main talking point and the headline reads for itself if you don't want to read it i'll go ahead and read it for you it says reggae girls news and updates so i'm back similar show to last night thank you to those of you who shared maybe what was it was it an hour last night maybe sat for an hour with you guys last night i'm um, touching on uh Rangers and Kayla McCoy and we're going to go over that as well um also gave you some update there on Tiffany Cameron and also shared some update with you guys on Rebecca Spencer so um I don't want to sound too repetitive but I'm going to do a little backsliding for those of you who missed yesterday's show and then we're going to get into the main talking point so sit tight I'm not going to let it slip what the main talking point is uh so do sit tight and then um halfway through I will give you um the latest news Miss Panton how are you how are you doing how are you feeling good evening to yourself she's saying good evening and good night um, <laughs> Listen, if you do get the jersey, you're going to have to convert yourself from a um, Manchester United fan to a fully pledged Arsenal fan. So if you're ready to do that, then we can talk business. If not, you might have to just sit back and wait on uh, Adidas to give your club, Manchester United, a Arsenal-inspired kit. Don't hold your breath, though, because um, we seem to be one of the favourites there for Adidas in terms of um, Jersey appeal and so on. Mr. Mullins, how are you? How are you doing? How... <laughs> How's your week been? It's midweek for the majority of you, I presume, in the comment section there. Let me know how your week has been, guys. Um, Lisa, I know that um, Sabrina isn't feeling too well, but hopefully um she's on a steady road to recovery so like i said guys what we're gonna do we're just gonna um, do a little bit of a backtracking thank you to those of you by the way who have hit the uh like button without me having to be a little bit pushy so thank you to those of you for doing so um so 
Right. We're going to do, we're going to start things off by looking at last night's game, right? So I'm going to turn on my shared screen. We can look at last night's game. Also, before I close off, we're going to touch on a bit of um, athletics news as well. So I'm going to do my part to keep you guys updated, just in case you manage to um, somehow miss some news and updates where our reggae girls and potentially where our um, athletes are concerned in athletics, track and field, to be accurate. Good evening, Mr. Reed. How are you? How are you doing? How's things going with you? <laughs> I'm well. I can't I can't complain. I'm good. I definitely can't complain. How are you though? Let me know how you're doing there in the comment section. And that goes to all of you. Those of you who choose to sit and watch quietly, drop a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Right. Let me know how your week's been. Is the week treating you good or is it treating you mean? Let me know in the comment section. Right. So let's go ahead and turn on my first shared screen. I need to make sure I get this right because um, I have multiple um, tabs open. I'm not trying to confuse myself. All right. So it seems like. Also, let me know if you guys managed to watch the Champions League game last night. That's Rangers game. And for those of you who are wondering, Rangers is the club belonging to Miss Kayla McCoy, um, former club of Chantel Swaby. So let's go ahead. You should be able to see this one in front of you in the center of the screen. If you can't see it, um, it would help if I remove my banner. If you can't see it, then let me know and I will go ahead and do a little bit of a tweaking from the technical side, but you should be able to see it. Again, if you can't see it, drop a comment and let me know. Sabrina is saying that she watched the game. At least someone watched the game. That's good to know. So let me leave that comment there. Let me just give you guys some, a brief little overview of this one. So you should be able to read the score. Not exactly the score that um, we would have wanted for Rangers and for Kayla McCoy, but the huge positive from this, as I stated in last night's stream, you can read this one for yourself. Kayla McCoy at the double, a goal in each half. Um, unfortunately, they were... Um, face with a own goal decision. Um, that's their goalkeeper there, guys. Where the own goal is, and if you have if you have watched it, I think you will agree with me that that was an absolute blunder. Um, between the sticks, one of those games where I'm pretty sure she just kind of want to just move on, and I'm pretty sure that she's looking forward to the second leg. So for those of you who are wondering, as it states in the center of your screen, this was the this is the match for the second round um, of the UEFA Women's Champions League going through the qualification stages, um, slow and steady. And this was leg one. So leg two is um, taking place next week. Another bit of positive news for Rangers and for Kayla McCoy. This was a debut for them um, in regards to playing on home soil in the Champions League some weeks back against the Hungarian champions. Um, um, Rangers made their Champions League debut and last night they christened the Ibrox with um, the Champions League debut for their women's team. So plenty of positives there to ponder over if you support Rangers and Kayla McCoy and that comes outside of the obvious, the obvious there being the full-time score losing 3-2 against Benfica. Both of these teams could um, call it coincidentally sit top of their top of their tables respectively so both teams are sitting pretty at the top of their um respective leagues so it was always going to be a mouth-watering clash hopefully um rangers and kayla mccoy can put their names on the score sheet at early doors when they um, show up in Benfica for the second leg. I think it's safe to say that Benfica had um, the better start to the game, but thankfully Rangers managed to creep into it. I'm still a little bit confused, guys. Let's see if I can scroll down. So we're going to talk about this moment right here. I've been pondering over this one and I'm still I really can't make sense of it. Maybe you guys can. Where is it? Why can't I see? Okay, there we are. So if you watched the game or if you were tuning into last night's stream, you would have known that Kayla McCoy was substituted inside the 74th minute. I'm not really sure why the gaffer did that because some observation 
she appeared to look fine. I trust that she would have liked to have gotten a hat trick. And this is one of those things that I hate when coaches and uh, managers make that uh, bizarre, in my mind, it's a bizarre decision to take off your um, forward when they're so close to a hat trick. I don't know, is that the coach's way of trying to keep uh, McCoy hungry and determined and motivated? I really think you need to do that with a player like um, McCoy. She seems to be one of those uh, players who are just switched on focus and ready to do the job. And that's exactly what she's doing not just in the Champions League, but also in the league as well. Um, came so close to getting her hat-trick and probably one of the, I wouldn't call it a negative, it's more of an annoyance on my behalf. Uh, I can't speak for Kayla McCoy, but on my behalf, a little bit annoyed that she wasn't given the opportunity to get her full opportunity, that is, let me correct myself, to complete her hat-trick. And um, it's quite unfortunate, isn't it? Because she was substituted in the 74th minutes. And then four minutes later, um, there was the winner. What was the match winner? Um, again, a own goal between the sticks. Goalkeeper at fault for that one. Obviously, nothing intentional. And that was enough to give um, Benfica the all-important three points. And that's how things are looking. See what you guys are saying in the comment section. You're doing good. She said, I want to be. <laughs> they could not, there was no VAR on um, um duty, but they couldn't have me on VAR because I would have given I would have I would have chalked off that goal. So I could not be doing any VAR where any rigor girls is concerned, because I'll be doing all types, I'll be behaving like Eddie Guerrero. If you know Eddie Guerrero, you know exactly what I'm on about. So yeah, I could not be on no sort of <laughs> match officiating duties where the reggae girls are concerned. Uh, it was a goal, to be fair. Um, she did cross the line. <laughs> as much as we want to sit here and bat it away, it 100% was a goal. And um, Sabrina says, yes, 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 I will be um, getting into that before I close off on my show. That's actually my um, athletics talking point for those of you who would have missed um, that lovely bit of news. So I will be um, touching on that before I close off on the show. So that's how things is looking there for Rangers and um, Kayla McCoy. Like I said to you guys, uh, there things going well for Rangers, most certainly where um, their league campaign is concerned and also, also definitely where um, the champion links is concerned. I want them to go to Benfica and get the job done. And for those of you who are wondering, in the league, they've played five matches, five wins, a goal difference of 35, and they have a maximum point of 15. Um, they are the current reigning champions of the Scottish Women's Premier League, and they won the, t the title last year undefeated. And as things stand, they are still undefeated so things are looking good for Kayla McCoy and Rangers and long may it continue entertaining week really what's been keeping you entertained let us know drop us drop some add some clarity to that don't just tease us let us know there in the comment section what's keeping you entertained and if I go back over here and bring up my banner for those of you who are wondering um I'm just here to give you guys a little bit of a reggae girls news and updates and it first part of the show yes it will sound a little bit repetitive and I'm doing so because there is over the last few live streams there's been a couple late arrivals um apparently YouTube isn't notifying you guys when I go live so I thought all right well let's do a bit of um repeat of yesterday's show just so everyone can be on the same page and then we keep it moving with today's news and update right so the next one that we are looked at in terms of player the, the other player that we looked at yesterday was um tiffany cameron let me make sure that i don't close off on the raw on the um wrong stream so let's close off on rangers for a second if i need to backtrack on rangers i will um, so let's just do this in the right order and let's go and look at Tiffany Cameron. If you're just tuning into the live stream, good day to yourself. How you doing? Drop a comment in the comment section. That's what it's there for. Um, make good use of the comment section. It's there for a reason. So please do utilize it. And this one is an easy read for you, isn't it? If you don't want to read it, 
I'll go ahead and read it for you. It says, Tiffany Cameron has been named Player of the Year at the Hungarian Gala Dinner Ceremony. And this one took place in terms of the announcement earlier um, this week. I'm already into my, um, coming closer to my Thursday, about 10, 12 minutes away from that um, Thursday morning here in London. So let me go ahead and click on the dress because I know it's the dress that you all want to see. So there you go. Um, Tiffany Cameron looking stunning in her dress and with her award in her hand. And yes, this is a, a an award that was given to Tiffany for her goals and assist contribution and all round um, play for Eto FC. And in case you're wondering what is Eto FC or where is um, Eto FC, they are based in Hungary. Yes, I did say Hungarian gala, dinner and ceremony. So um, Eto FC are based in top flight of women's football in Hungary. So do keep an eye on that league. And if you're too busy, if you're a little bit snowed under and you don't have the time on your hands, don't worry, I've got you covered every weekend keep an eye on the channel and i'll be giving you the latest okay <laughs> chalk <laughs> this guy <laughs> you're something eh. listen oh great now i've got two man united fans in the i might as well end the live i've got two of them going neck and neck in the comment section i'm going to be ending the live soon people i've been here for 16 minutes give myself another 60 seconds and we're going to be closing off <laughs> all right uh let's close off on this um on that uh tab and i'm going to open up another tab for you guys and this time we're going to north london um seeing how things is looking in north london also some um Good news for those of you who love a bit of um head-to-head -head derby clash. Yeah, it's got two big games for you guys to look forward to over the weekend of the North London derby. And you've also got um the blue half of London, Chelsea taking on Bonnie Shaw and Manchester City. So that's your Super Sunday and a huge Saturday awaits at the Emirates Stadium. I'm going to give you guys a gentle reminder before I close off. Okay, so I got you guys covered, so don't you worry. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Tottenham Hotspurs. Um, Spurs. Can't make a joke about Tottenham because they do currently... Um, they are currently the home for two reggae girls. So kind of have to just keep my little jokes to myself with Tottenham and wish them the very best with each game that comes their way. And this one is an easy read, isn't it? I did send out a Instagram post yesterday. yesterday and I think I might have tweeted about this. I'm not sure if I did. Definitely know I dropped something on Instagram for you guys. And I also did a video a live stream uh, yesterday evening as well. So in case you missed this, missed this one, it's pretty much straightforward, straight down the middle. So Centre for Parents in the Barclays Women's Super League, that's the top flight of women's football in England. And that is a incredible milestone, um, which Rebecca Spencer has managed to um, put under her belt. So 100 appearance in the Barclays Women's Super League. Long may it continue. And she did it in uh, incredible fashion over the weekend, securing three points in the opening weekend of the women's super league um be in the foxes 2-1 and on the occasion we had a goal from rebecca spencer in the right net <laughs> she also unfortunately um conceding an own goal but luckily um 2-1 was enough to give spurs the maximum points right so mr solids how are you how's things in your neck of the woods Always good to see you around. This goalkeeper was one of the best find for Jamaica. She might be in the top 10 in the world. Yeah, goalkeeping position. Um, I think it's one of those things that we can pretty much relax ourselves in terms of squad depth because... Um, Rebecca Spencer and also we have we know we have um Yasmin Jameson as well but we can't forget Sydney Schneider because everybody will have their own observation but for me at the last World Cup um, Schneider was no doubt one of the best players on display and I'm not just talking about uh, for Jamaica um, huge occasion going up against the likes of Brazil as on your debut and safe to say she held her head high um, you can tell that she has bags of class in her and the world was talking about Sydney Schneider with the save that she uh, made at the 
2019 World Cup in France. So if you have not managed to catch any glimpses of um, Schneider um, solids, you wouldn't have um, managed to catch anything. I'm assuming you haven't caught anything in the game against South Korea um, because she was the um, number one keeper. Uh, in the international friendly against South Korea but that one that game was like it wasn't even accessible to us in the diaspora I know you guys on on the ground in Jamaica you had the opportunity to watch it on um, replay on television Jamaica so maybe you managed to catch it um, solids but like I said, we are quite fortunate in the goalkeeper department. Um, I'm going to die on that hill and say that she is a world-class player. She is she's magnificent. Um, she's one of those players. And she's young as well. So can you imagine? We know that goalkeepers have a long shelf life, right? Can play in their deep 30s, 40s, you name it, depending on whether they um, take care of their bodies and so on. But Sydney Schneider, for me, she is right up there as good as they get, as good as they come. Right, so we've already spoken about, um, whilst we're at it, let me just remind you all there, so if I can go and um, get up the WSL for you guys, let me take this one off screen for you and I'm going to look at the uh, WSL with you guys quickly before it slips my mind because I've got a feeling it just might do that obviously nothing intentional but before it slips my mind let's just go over and look at the um, women's super league quickly don't know if anyone in um, either London if anyone is in London I'm not sure if you guys are making your way to any w WSL games over the weekend if there's ever a time to get yourself to a WSL fixture surely surely this is the weekend to do it and I'll give you a gentle reminder as to why that is okay so let's click on the WSL and first up in terms of the big occasion there is the North London derby um, taking place at the Emirates Stadium 1 30 p.m kickoff um, for those of you who are in England, right? And as I've already reiterated on uh, many, many occasions, Spurs, Tottenham, Hot Spurs, that is, is the home of um, Rebecca Spencer and Drew Spence, and they'll be taking on their rivals, Arsenal, at the Emirates Stadium. So last weekend was the opening weekend. A little bit of a delay there due to um, the passing of the Queen, um, in terms of the league kick-starting. So there we have it. The first match has been played. And as things stand, it is Arsenal who are occupying the top position. Um, one match played, obviously one win in the bag, three points. Closest team to them as things stands is Manchester United. Spurs sitting in fifth place there. Uh, we can also keep an eye on Liverpool because that is the... Um, home of Taylor Hines. They also have one, um, three points in their back pocket. So, like I said, closest team to them at the moment in terms of the team at the top, Manchester United, when you look at those goal difference. If we go over and click on Man City, let me know what you guys think of Manchester City, guys. And I'm going to probably put my head on the line here and say that this could be the final season for their gaffer. Um, I, I can't see him lasting. If he's lost the the uh the duration of this current campaign, I'll be surprised. That would obviously mean he has to turn things around. But just kind of feel like um as things stand, if you take into man take into consideration Manchester City's start to their um season last campaign. Yes, this is only match day one, but let's not kid ourselves. I mean, no disrespect to Aston Villa, but your Manchester City, you're so used to being up at the top of the um table, fighting with the likes of the Arsenal and your Manchester um United and your also your um Chelsea. Man, you yes can still say that they're new-ish. Um um, because of when they were found and when they came into the league. But obviously, those are their closest rivals uh, in terms of location. So naturally, they will be fighting with them head to head. But you're not really expecting Aston Villa to beat Manchester City. Given Manchester City's poor start to last season, you surely you'd want to start off with a, with a um, 
you want to give a potent start to the season. And unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be for them. The scoreline pretty much reads for itself, doesn't it? Being beaten 4-3 away from home. And um, as ever, last season, we were concerned about Bunny Shaw, weren't we? And I think it's safe to say we're probably going to be concerned again this season. You can see there that Bunny was substituted inside the 70th minute. Um, she scored inside the 53rd minute, though, thank God. Um, and it seems to me that even with her back against the wall, quite similar maybe to her national team. Obviously, the surroundings is different if you're talking about about stuff maybe from a professional standpoint and organization and so on um, but she's still having to play with her back against the wall and any question that gets put to her from her gaffer um, for Manchester City she delivers we're so used to seeing Bunny last season coming off the bench having to score our assists this season it's probably going to be more of the same um, and I'm starting to believe that under their gaffer it just kind of seems like they're just losing, losing their je ne sais quoi. I don't know if you guys would um, agree with that, but they just, they're just losing it at the moment. They haven't completely lost it because it is still Manchester City. But when you look at losing players to the likes of um, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, these are the clubs that you want to compete against in Europe. Arsenal came close to losing Miedema on a number of occasions to Barcelona and they stood firm and they managed to persuade the player to extend their contract. You're sending shipping players off, allowing players to go off to Real Madrid. Said player that you ship off to Real Madrid ends up dumping you out of the qualif qualification round of the Champions League. Again, letting one of your most prized assets go off to Bayern Munich. You kind of have to sit and wonder and say to yourself like what is um what is going on here because it's not really making sense obviously our um main concern lies with bunny kind of feel like yes if he does stay beyond this season then i would not be surprised i have said it a number of time um that i do think that um bunny will be on the move at some point if this whole nonsense continues i think that she will most certainly um be making a transfer to another club i'm hoping that she does um stay in the league and this is just my assumption by the way so there's nothing concrete behind it i'm just trying to read the game if you're bunny look you should be starting week in week out without a doubt um, and you need to be in a place where you're appreciated, not saying that Manchester City as the club don't appreciate her, but City and the coach or the manager, they're two different um, entities there. So I was trying to um, think of the player's name, um, Georgia Stanway and Caroline Way, guys, Georgia Stanway going to um, Bayern Munich and Caroline Way going to Real Madrid. And matter of fact, Caroline Way was on the um, score sheet um, tonight. Again, let me just double check that. Um, Caroline Ware was on the score sheet tonight again, guys. And yeah, she pretty much sent Manchester City. She scored two, a matter of fact. She scored a double, guys, in the 13th minute and the 52nd minute. And yeah, like I said to you, she pretty much sent City packing in the Champions League. A bit of a deja vu um, outcome there for Manchester City because they exited the Champions League Um similar stages last um, campaign, last season's campaign. Outrageous that you don't have a team like Manchester City and Bonnishaw competing in the um, Champions League. But thankfully, thankfully, we're still in the Champions League and I'm going to get into a little bit of um, the Champions League conversation. I've been talking at you guys for almost half an hour. So when it hits 30 minutes, we're going to change um, the conversation slightly and I'm going to talk about my main talking points. Right, because uh, my main talking points, I haven't um, touched on it yet. I've tried so hard not to touch on it just yet because I'm still holding on for a couple of um, late arrivals. Um, yes, Miss Panton, I will be giving you a call um, shortly. So let me look at my notes. Um, by the way, before I forget my manners, massive thank you to you guys there in the comments section. If you haven't already subscribed to um, Coach's Desk, I'm not really sure what you're waiting on, really. Um, go over and subscribe to his channel. Drop a like on his um, latest video. And every time he shows up in that horrible Manchester United jersey, just give him some balls and some bottles for me, please. And thank you. Okay, guys. Um. 
there's another um, bit of news there um, to give you guys. And you must be familiar with this one. Um, let me put stick a pin in it one, one second there. Um, one moment there, guys. Charge short one, okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure. You, you don't, you don't sound great, by the way, guys. Um, that is um, Miss Panton that's on the line, in case you guys are wondering. I thought you were yeah. going to sit, sit this one out. Um, I did, I did ask you to say it out because you don't sound too 100. Okay, I will sit this one out then. <laughs> <laughs> you can if you want I to. Sit. I mean, you're already here, so. I'm more than happy to um, yeah. listen to you. Oh, I'll sit this one out. <laughs> no, no, please, please continue. Um, I, I want to hear your thoughts. Um, I was on uh, my thoughts is on Kayla Makai. I just think she need um, she need she need a chance in the national team. Like um, she need minutes. Like she haven't been getting any minutes, and she's been proving herself. Like yes, we all know that Bunny Shaw is like. <laughs> Scoring a lot of goals and she always do what she needs to do on the field. But come on, Bunny Shaw could come out in the seven to five minutes. You could come on and play the same role. Like um, you could see back in Mexico, like you see Bunny Shaw was injured. I don't remember when it's exactly match and um you could see her right through the game. She wasn't herself. The thing that I think that was the only match she didn't score in, and she was like forced like to play the whole match and you have a, like a killer Makai on the bench. I know I know like they're saying like without a bunny Jamaica can't win. I probably that's what the coach saying, but you're gonna um, wreck wreck a bunny shot when you have a player like Killer Makai who constantly scoring goal in and out. Hundred you know you know I'm not gonna disagree with you on that and we, we do need to protect Bunny. We one hundred percent need to protect Bunny and Kayla McCoy is there and she she can do the job. I mean this is this is a conversation that needs to be put to the to the feet of the gaffer because I'll be I'm interested. I'm intrigued to listen to, to hear what he's thinking. Because you know, like you said, uh, and it's not just this season, I think it's safe to say this season Kayla McCoy looks more um clinical than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. She's, um, um I watch um I watched the match against Benfica and Ranger yesterday and I'm like I'm not saying she was out of the game but she took her two chances and she did score because she get the ball like it was from across in the first goal off her head in the top corner. The keeper get a hand to it but couldn't stop it from going the goal because it was that powerful. And then the second goal was like a transitional play. Like she got the ball and she have two defenders to beat and then the keeper and which other defender was running in and she um take on the two defenders and place the ball in the far corner. I think it was just at the edge of the box from the far corner. And she put it in the back post. Yeah. Threw it in the corner. They go down like she scored two brilliant goals yesterday and um for a debutant in the champion league, the second game she ever played in the one of the highest level of football and she did compose herself and she did well and she been scoring week in and week out for Rangers. I just think um she need a she need a chance. Like we have a regular girl squad going into the World Cup. You could try um play like um like for example, you're in a game like you probably we probably don't want it, which I don't want to see that, but I'm just saying that like, we probably don't want it when you have sixty minutes on the clock. You could probably like take off a winger and put on a killer Makai, like you have two strikes up front, create more chances. One of them must score. But once they get a chance, either way, either Bonnie Shaw or Killer Makai, either Bonnie Shaw play her through or she play Bonnie Shaw through because she can create chances for the players. So because I watch a few match Rangers and I see she um She's like drifting back, like like a Bobby Reed. Like you see, a Bobby Reed wasn't like he was struggling for the last two camps or so. Um, in the national team, and I see Bobby Reed playing for Fulham, and he's like drifting back. He's running back. He's collecting the ball in midfield. He's trying to create something. He's like defending, and then watching a Bobby Reed in Fulham is like. The same thing with Kayla Maka. I see Kayla Maka doing at Rangers. I see she's like going back. She's helping in defense. She's coming in midfield. She's receiving the ball. She's trying to create something. She's running in behind. She's holding her place. I'm saying like, 
she's proven herself, so at least give her a fair chance. Why isn't she getting that fair chance, Miss Panton? I probably the coach. Um, I'm not trying um trying to say anything bad about the coach. Probably the coach don't um. Yeah, I wanna call. Yeah, um, um the um, I think the coach um probably um. No name on there on here. Probably the coach um don't really have her in her plant or something like that. I don't know her. Like can you have a Kiki Van Zenten on the bench and I'm swear Kiki Van Zenten can play on the wing. Mm-hmm. And I would rather just see Kiki Van Zenten on the wing than a Chudi cut. I don't really care what no one has to say, but I, I see Kiki doing something that I never see um Trudy Carter done, and I know Trudy Carter has so many caps for Jamaica. Yes, yeah, she scored. She scored how many goals for Jamaica? I I'm not really sure, but probably about 15, 16, or probably more. I'm not really counting, but I'm saying, like, she's a she's a midfielder, but the coach I'm um, playing with a midfielder on the wing, and you have a winger like she that um, proven herself at college level. She come on, and she have proven herself. Like, a lot of players... um proving themselves but them not getting um the fair chance. I don't yes. know why. Because That's probably great. um I I just can't see past this. I don't know. I don't understand. But I <laughs> but hopefully as the future goes by we see the changes going into the World Cup. Because as I said before in the last show, I don't wanna see a, a defender playing a midfield. I don't wanna see a midfielder playing on the wing when you have winger sitting on the bench. Why we <laughs> why we um have a winger in the side when a winger is on the bench and a midfielder is on the wing. That made no sense to me. Mm-hmm. When um the last time I was like pissed like I um through the carter. Mm-hmm. And when I see Trudy Carter and um, the starting the level when I come on Instagram most of the time, the same feeling I get when I see Ari Maguire and then Man United starting. And really? I'm saying she has proven herself that she can play, she can score goal. But I'm saying like, only way I, it will sit well with me is like if she's playing in the midfield. Okay. And at this point, and at this point to me, um, Salon is ahead of her. Asha is ahead of her in midfield. Drew Spence is ahead of her. Jade, Jade, Jade Bale is ahead of her in midfield. So probably like they're trying to convert her on the wing, but the wing doesn't suit her. She's not a natural winger because most of the time, like I watch her play, you know, like she's like drifting off shoulder. She's like a player that will have probably drifting offside one or two times. Like she haven't received the ball like in an offside position, but you could see her drifting, drifting in the offside track a lot of the time on the wing because she's a natural uh, midfielder. Like I don't know if the coach trying to convert her, but I don't see see well with her on the wing. I think she fit more like the midfield position for me. She has to fight for her place in midfield because if I am naturally a midfielder and I want to be a winger, I have to start playing winger, obviously, but you're playing on the wing and it's not working out for you. You've got to stick to what you, you're you used to. And obviously, she, um, she got a chance in Spain. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Spain is um, a country that likes to have the ball to their feet. Like, it doesn't matter which side. Like, when you watch... um, I was watching um the Champions League against Bayern. And that, um, what a team the name that uh, played Bayern woman yesterday. I don't, the team slipping me, but I'm like, oh, God. Like, I know Bayern is a good team. And Bayern score. And when they have the ball, they do what they need to do. But I'm like, this is how Spain play. Like, it doesn't matter which team in Spain. This is the lower league or the higher league. They're always going to have position. They like to have at least 55 position at the ball. So, truly, Carter going into Spain. Spain is a transitional player. They like to they like to play with the ball at their feet. So probably she will get um used to holding position, holding um a lot of position with the ball. So probably she could bring it back in the national team and improve her game because in Spain she has to um learn to keep the ball at her feet. Move, uh, move the ball as quick as possible to our teammates. They like, um, they like to, they like to make a lot of passes and take control of the position of the ball most of the time. So probably that will help her lift her game a little more. 
going into the World Cup or the next windows of your But I, I think it all depends on where their um Gaffer decides to play her um for her for her new club in, in, in Spain, isn't it? Yeah, but um as I see um the club that um introduced her, they um say that oh they um signed the um Jamaica international striker. So yeah. I don't know. She's left from a winger position into a striker role. Let's see. Uh, I don't know where they're gonna play her, but obviously they said on their page that they signed um Jamaica international um striker. striker. So I don't know. I don't see um Carter as a striker. Mm. I see her more like a CM to me. She's more like a midfielder, like or a defensive midfielder, more like an attacking midfielder. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, she's like somebody that could play behind a bunny shot. Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. Speaking of play, speaking of playing um players out of position, if push comes to shove, and you know, like you said, you touched on the um, importance of um, goal contribution, having players on the team that can make a difference, even if um the the gaffer don't want to take off bunny shot because maybe he wants to kill off the game. Uh, are you in favour of doing something similar to what we saw Vin Blaine did with playing Kayla McCoy in midfield? Like, you're the, uh, like if you want to kill off a game, like you're talking about the start of the game or late in the game. Whichever, because, um, I mean, Vin Blaine tested it out and to be fair, he, he tested it out because we didn't have much choice, but he got away with it because it worked. I think if you if you were watching that particular match where... Uh, Kayla McCoy played in midfield. You would have assumed that that is her natural position to compose herself yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, she's was not a midfielder. And, um, in midfield. and they looked good in um in yeah, as, as a yeah, midfield yeah. pairing. That, that's what I'm saying. Like um, I was saying a, a while ago, like um, a game grew like a Bobby Reed was being criticized like couple um months ago or so, and he wasn't playing well, and then. I watch him in the Premier League for Fulham. He's like, as I said, he's just running back. He's playing like a defender. He's playing in the midfield. He's playing on the wing. He's playing all over the field. So I said, I see some of Bobby Reed in Kayla McCoy. I see her drifting in the midfield. I see her going back. So she's like, she looks like somebody could um, have a multiple position on the team. Like if you probably need um, need an leader as an attacking chet and also somebody who could play in the midfield and also going forward. Like, yeah, like... You're down in the game, or probably you're up in the game, and you want um more like an attacking threat or so kill off the game, whichever way you take it. You could have um probably taken out somebody and put, or put a killer mark or jumper in the middle and mm-hmm. had another defender, or whatever. Depends on the tactics that the um the coach using. Yeah, she could play in the midfield. Like she's like one of the most. This is like one of the versatile players. She yeah. probably not been used versatile than the time when um. Vin Blaine user as the midfield as soon as I was here in a different position, different from where she normally play and mm-hmm. it did work for her. But like a truly cut is like they try to use the user in the mid, the user on the wing. Um and that doesn't work out for her. But like a killer Maka, like I see her could play on the wing too. Or, like a killer Maka can play on the wing because yesterday in the Rangers game you probably watch her sometimes she drifted on the wing and as I yeah. said she come and she's collecting the ball and she's trying to create. So, yeah, she's um, a versatile player. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be keeping my eyes on that one because, to be honest with her, I, I'm not – usually I'm not in favour of playing plays out of their um, natural position. But if something no, works – I don't like, I don't like play, playing out of the I, – as I was saying to you this morning, um, I'm going into the World Cup um, – when it's like a friendly, mm-hmm. you could probably test the waters. But going into the World Cup, I don't want to see the team sheet. You have like five defender, for example, <laughs> and when you um when when you see the team sheet, you have five defenders, and you wonder how you have five defenders. Are they going to three back and win back? And when you look um <laughs> and what they say, it's probably a four three three or something like that. And you have a defender playing in the midfield, or you have a defender. On the wing, we don't want to see that. We want play to play out of the position. But what I think with this coach, um, I'm going to be honest. Like I think this coach have um, certain players that he want to be on the starting eleven. So he doesn't mind for him if they play them out of position as long as that such player that has to be on the field. So I think this coach going forward, he will probably play play out of position based on 
who you want on the field because you go have um for example for example you're going with a four three three and you have your four defender and then you you probably um with the four defender that he have he's probably have a defender and, um there what he want in the team but it not the defender is not in the centre back position or any of the the full back. So I think he would like put on a defender as a defensive midfield because I see Dora more than one time. Mm. But going forward we don't wanna see that we wanna see players like you go to the World Cup and you go as a midfielder, you're playing midfield. If if there's not a spot on the team sheet for you, if like you have three midfielder out there and you would like to as another midfield, all you have to do is like Go with the three midfield at half time or six mid going down is support mm. one for another. Yeah. But I don't wanna see um four midfield on the field. <laughs> and unless you're playing with um four people in mid and two striker and something like that. I've and got that's a, not a I've, position to play. I've got a comment here for you. Um in there's a comment in the comment section from uh Mr. Devin Porter. So I'm gonna read it out for you, okay? Yeah. All right. So, um, Mr. Porter says, um, "How do you understand football? If you ever coach the game, please tell the caller. Please tell. Please allow the coach to do his job, and continue to be a spectator. Um, playing a player out of a position can be a tactical move to change the game. So that's um two comments there from uh Mr. Porter. Repeat, repeat, repeat the comments." The first comment is, please ask the caller, how does she understand football? And if she ever coached the game, please tell please tell her to allow the coach to do his job and continue to be a spectator. Obviously, I'm going to answer no, I never coach a game. Doesn't mean that I don't know the game. Listen, we all watch football and we know football. So listen, like... You will tell me that you wanna see um um like we get away with these things in the Caribbean and we face like a ET or this and that going to the World Cup, we can't use a defender in midfield. We cannot use a midfielder on the wing because we're gonna get punished. Because we're gonna go into the World Cup, we're gonna play it at the highest level. It's gonna be a different type of gravy. I don't care what you wanna say if I was to be a spectator. Yes or no. Obviously my opinion is my opinion. Everybody have their own opinion. Doesn't mean because I'm talking the coach gonna be um changing tactics. I'm just voicing my opinion. That's my opinion and your opinion matters to you. My opinion matters to me. I hope that one answers your question there, um, uh, Mr. Porter. Yes, um, football is a game of opinions. Um, sometimes people speak purely facts, and sometimes it's just as simple as people just giving us their opinion because it is a game of opinions at the end of the day. Uh, Mr. Porter says sometimes it, it does not. Um, I'm not really sure which one he's um, referring to, but he also says... Caller, you sure can. It can be tactical. I think he's talking about um, playing players out of position. Yes, as I said um, um, earlier, Darren, I said, yes, it could be tactical, but you can't go every game doing the same thing because different opponent, you'll get punished because you have a team, like, you probably use it against this team and you get away with it. And another team probably... Um, Going into another game, they try to um, read up based on how you play in the next game, and they like see a player that playing in the midfield that's not a midfielder. Like they um, they could um use that to their advantage because you have to know how to play. Like you're not gonna play the players out of position in every game. Like it all depends on the tactics of the game. Yes, yeah. Probably you want ten men behind the ball, like like um Atletico Madrid. Like most of the times, like they play like. How they play. Sometimes you have Atletico Madrid, they score one goal and then you had to get hard to break down. Like the whole 90 minutes, you try to create and because they have everybody behind the ball, so it could work out. Like if you got a goal up and you have everybody behind the ball, but then again, you have some team that can find a way to punish you. Not everybody can pull off that Atletico Madrid um, style. 
Absolutely. By the way, Mr. Porter, if you want to call in, then let me know. Um, and if you want to just come on screen, then let me know as well. And I'll share the link with you in the comment section. So whichever floats your boat, um, go ahead and let me know. We're approaching almost one hour into the show. So Miss Panton, please don't go nowhere. I'm going to be giving us the um the next talking point um of our live stream. So hang tight with me. Let me just bring up my link my got so much links so many um screens open here guys um okay so let's just take um through the carter off the screen um quickly and let's go ahead and this is what we're going to do we're going to hit the shared screen um got to get rid of um through the carter behind the scene as well and let's go back over to the Champions League. Quite like the Champions League this season, guys, because it's not just about Kayla McCoy and Rangers. It's also about Elika Keane and Slavia Prague. And they came out as triumphant um, tonight in their game against their opponent. And fortunately for us, we had Elika Keane coming on in the latter stages of the game um, inside the 86th minute to help Slavia Prague produce a crucial 1-0 win um, in, the, in their first leg of the um, UEFA Women's Champions League second round tie. So that makes for some positive reading there is the support um, regular girls Reggae Girl in particular, Elika Keen, and also Slavia Prague. I know I do talk about them quite um, in depth, and we have been looking at how things are um, shaping up in the um, Czech Republic there as it relates to um, Slavia Prague. And we're going to go back and look at them quickly just to give you guys a brief reminder of how they're looking in their top flight of their um, football league. Four matches played four wins on the board, um, zero losses, maximum points, and a goal difference of 25. So not only do we have Kayla McCoy in the Champions League, but we also have Elika Keane as well. And since we're on the topic of Elika Keane, this is the perfect person to talk to. Miss Panton, what is going on with Elika Keane at the national level? Um, why is it that we haven't seen a recall from her, or for her, I should say? You're breaking up. You gotta repeat. Um, did you did you catch any anything I just said, or do I need to repeat the the whole thing? No, about you were saying something about what about Alika Keen? Yeah, um, recall for Alika Keen. How come you haven't seen a recall for Alika Keen? Um, um, in my opinion, as um, let I said that because I don't want nobody else coming at me. In my opinion, <laughs> I don't think um. <laughs> Um, probably the situation with Ali Kakin is probably because um, it's not this coach that um, kept her. I'm not saying anything and un unbiased or anything. Probably this coach wasn't looking at Ali Kakin. Probably um, he want Ali Kakin, but probably not in his plan at the moment. It could be either way. Or probably you could see it at the um, the next international window. But let's see. But she deserves to um, get another call up. Not saying she deserves to be on the team. She going into the World Cup. We don't know what the team she's gonna look like. But yeah, she's um balling out. So she need to, she deserve another call up. Not just Ali Kakin. I think um. The Dale's sister, they um, the, I don't. Both of them name is similar, so I'm really not sure the exact one. But I think that one that we, that come on um played for the reggae girl, the one that cap got the cap, and she wear the number five um in that game. Like I see her playing um in the US uh, for Maryland, Maryland soccer, um Maryland College, and she's like she's having a game. She's um she's um doing well in her she's doing well so I think um she deserves another chance like another look at not saying as I said before not saying they should be in the team going into the World Cup but get another look at because at this point all you have to do is um bring in tea, bringing in players and see what you can do going forward for squad depth because anything could possibly happen somebody could come up with an a little minor injury a little tweak or something and you want to have squad depth so yeah i think um alika keen if i should choose one of the two uh alika keen alika keen um deserve um another call and she deserve another shot because she has a um i am not saying 
she's the best defender we got. I'm not putting her against any other defender or anything, but I'm saying the goal that she scored um in the um the qualifiers that one of the uh, I think that's the best goal scored by a Jamaican in the qualifiers. Yeah, where she picked the ball from, and she's a naturally defender. She's not a midfielder. She's not a winger. She's not a striker. So she um she's like a versatile player. Like she probably can dribble the ball from the back and she can make a pass. She can um probably um hit something in the back of the net because it looked like she wanted four bangers. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. And um, she's making a habit. She's growing into a habit of um scoring goals, most certainly for her club in um top flight of women's football in the uh, Czech Republic. So yeah, she is um scoring bangers. Uh, when she scores a goal, it tends to be a banger. So yeah, I'm definitely in favor of seeing um a recall for Elika Keen. And it's something yeah. that the, the coach needs to at least consider it because, you know, if anything happens, I'm not trying to wish bad on any of our players, but I think even you can remember, um, Miss Panton, when we had that little bit of a hand in mouth situation with the Swaby sisters, where at one point it looked like we they might have picked up an injury um, and we were fearing, could it be long term or is it short term? And we shouldn't really be in that position. We should be covered on, yeah. on all grounds. All right, all right, look at the Canadian national team and the U.S. national team in the championship in Mexico. Yeah. Did you know that um all of the team, everybody got a game, got a got, got, they rotate their squad. Jamaica didn't rotate the squad what, at all. Um, you have a Chantel Swaby and Alice Swaby playing every every game. You have um you have Rebecca Spencer. Oh, wait, you not really tweet the goalkeeper like more than like the goalkeeper um could play the whole game because like yeah, but I'm saying like what a Canada you have um different games, different players like you have more than one centre back. I see a centre back pairing of Gilles and Zadowski and there was another t- other two I think Gilles and Bucken and play as a centre back so they tweak it more than one time and then you have an Asian. Leon, what is that? The agent Leon playing up front is um um what's your name again? Um, she was in PS3 and she's um playing for Ole Reno, Ertima, Itima, Jordan Itima. When it's not she is, and you have a Christine Sinclair like she, you know that she's in age now, so she's like getting a lot of ninety minutes like one time. But like when she's not playing, you have initial Prince like they tweet the squad like with the reggae girls in Mexico. We didn't have. Um, a lot of different rotation in um the um the starting eleven is always like the same starting eleven going on the field. The only difference is they probably make sub going forward. Like you probably see a one player. But I'm thinking um I, because USA have that more squad depth and Canada have that more squad depth, they could probably put out a different eleven. They go into the championship with twenty three players, and I see um. When they um face um Jamaica, it was a different squad that they used face eighty. Like it's a whole different squad. The only three player that was remaining in the squad was Lindsay Oran, um Lindsay Oran, um, um Alana Crook. Cook and and Rose Lovell. Otherwise, everybody was rotated. That's only um three player that play um probably um in every game. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I have, and you a... have Alex Morgan, like you know, she's a quality player. Yeah, she's still playing every game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I have a comment here. I'm gonna uh, respond to it, and if you want to respond to it as well, you're more than welcome to. Um, good evening, Jamaican Red Devil. He says we have qualified for sub um, for consecutive World Cups. Surely we should have enough confidence in the coaching staff by now. Pushing the plight of one player over the other is counterproductive in my opinion okay um the first bit of your comment there is um it's a bit half and half yes we have um, um qualified for two successive world cup on the bounce but that is a qualification the second world cup qualification is split between two coaches at the interim phase uh if we're going to be given um Lauren Donaldson credit, then we definitely have to also give Vin Blaine credit because he got us through the um, initial stage of the um, qualifying round. Regardless if you like him or you dislike him, um, he was still the coach who was um, in charge up until that point. Um, so, yes, I get the point that you're trying to make, but this wasn't a one-man job. Uh, we didn't have Lauren Donaldson from the start to finish. Um, it was interim um, sharing the workload as it relates to the coaching staff and the gaffer um, 
leading or trying to steady the ship again um, many of much of what I've said probably open to your own interpretation you can formulate your own thoughts and opinions and whilst you're doing so um, kindly put away any personal feelings I know some of you are probably not in favor of one particular um, head coach but it doesn't really matter at this point if you're going to give one um, head coach credit it probably makes sense to give another um, head coach um, credit also and um, and that's pretty much what I have to say in terms of picking um, pl um putting plays against each other. Um, you probably just tuned into the live stream, but the caller did say that she isn't trying to put plays against each other. She's just um giving you her opinion. So she did say that she isn't trying to put players against each other. So if there's any confusion there, it's probably because you tuned in um quite late on the um live stream. I hope I've uh, managed to um, give you some clarity there, um Jamaica Red Devil. Um, if you want some further, if you want some further um, clarity, then um, drop a comment in the comment section. I'll try to tidy things up for you. Um, but it's definitely not a one man job. Football is a team sport. So it's not just one man that got us over the line on this occasion. OK. And Mr. Oh. go on there, um, Sabrina. No, I didn't hear the last part. Um, so no, I was just reiterating that it wasn't a one man job. I'm not sure. Maybe the caller was under the um impression that it was Lauren Donaldson that took us to the um World Cup, second consecutive World Cup from start to finish. So I was saying that um actually it was two head coaches. We had two head, co head coaches um in the interim position. We had Lauren Donaldson and we also had um Vin Blaine as well. Yeah, I think uh, you could credit both coach because um, Ben Blaine got us through the Caribbean round and then um, Dan also got us through the um, a Conquer Cup Championship. So, yeah, we finished third and, yeah, we have to give both credit, like... One second yeah, there, um, food. Sabrina. Um, you might need to go and reread your your comment here. So I'll read your comment again, um, Jamaican Red Devil. You said we have qualified for consecutive World Cups. Surely we should have enough confidence in the coaching staff by now. Pushing the plight of one player over the other is counterproductive, in my opinion. There's nowhere in that comment, unless I'm misreading it, where you said, um. I, in my opinion, I don't see where it says in my opinion. Quite frankly, it doesn't really matter to me if you said in my opinion or not, because I know that you're sharing your opinion. I've already said um, football is a game of opinions. Um, so I am taking it as your opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, your, your comment is open to interpretation. I'm looking at it as you're assuming that uh, it was just Lauren Donaldson that took us to the to our second successive World Cup. So again, for the purpose of transparency and clarity, I'm letting you know that it was not just Lauren Donaldson. You also had been Blaine in the interim arm um, position, as you did with um, Lauren Donaldson taking over in the interim position. Half and half, um, uh, Vin Blaine was there for the qualifiers, qualifying for the CONCACAF championship. And then you had Lauren Donaldson who took charge in the championship itself. Um, so again, um, you probably need to add clarity to what you've said because you're, you're saying, I said coaches, I still don't understand what you're trying to make. I, I don't understand your opinion. I don't, I don't understand your comment. Maybe I'm being a little bit slow. So if that's the case, um, please feel free to uh, help me to understand you because right now I'm a little bit lost. Um, so, yes, Sabrina, uh, please continue. Oh, hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but everybody has their own opinion, whether it's in football or whatever, in life itself, everybody has their, their own opinion when it comes on to so anything. But I'm saying, like, nobody's um, trying to put another player above another player. I'm saying everybody deserves a fair chance. Like, we want to see, um, we don't want to see, um, because you have, you know, these four players and you work with them for the past four years, seven years, ten years, you're going to bring them in the squad when you mm -hmm. have other four players out there who probably can do the same job or a better job in the moment. And because you know these four players, you're not going to give the other four players a shot or a look on. I'm not saying when you're calling up a player into the next window, that player is going to be the, US, the, um, the World Cup squad. All you're going to do is like see if the player is good enough. 
But Miss Miss Panton, at some point we can't afford to do that. So how many more? Um, how many more? Um, I would call it like the adjustment window, right? In preparation or the prepar the work of preparation. Um, I window. just think um only the I just think um as I said going into next year we don't want to see no more player coming in in the last. So last you're saying you're you're see, saying two more windows uh, the next then? Windows, just the next windows are like I would like to see uh Jesse Washington back in the next windows because. Um, I want to see her back in the next window, and I would like to see Alika Keen in the next window, and the Dave sister, and those are two players I want to see. They look at. I don't know if they are properly scouting other players that I'm not assured of or know of or anything like that. But I'm saying like they could probably um they should bring back Jesus Washington and Alika Keen and Dale. I'm not really remember which one of the Dale sister, but. Um, yeah. And a Jaden shot too. Um she's killing in the NWSL. I don't know if people are talking about this Jaden Shaw. Like I know she um played for the US in the under twenty World Cup recently, which they didn't qualify. They didn't come out the group, but yeah, I, I'm at seventeen, she's killing in the U um in the US. She scored um, a brilliant goal last week. Um she started three games, she had three goals. <laughs> well lad, well lad. <laughs> Jamaican Red Devil, you think you're smart. <laughs> you think you're smart. Listen, um, this is a platform where you can make as many mistakes as you can. I'm not going to get onto nobody for making mistakes because I make mistakes as well. Um, you didn't need to uh delete that comment. Um, leave it as it is, because you can delete it, but I can still see it. So there's really and truly no point in deleting it. Um, I'm not. I don't really care if people make mistakes on on my platform or not be in the comment section or my guests. Just as long as we're not um disrespecting any caller, anyone in the comment section, the coaching staff or the players themselves, or even JFF. Um, so you could have just left it there and just added to what you needed to add to because it would have given me the opportunity to apologize if I made a mistake. Um, so next time, just leave it as it is. Um, just leave the comment as it is. But let me just reiterate that the caller was not trying to pit players against each other. She didn't do that. And she did say that she isn't trying to put the players against each other. All right. Um, Mr. McGregor, good day, sir. How are you? Yes, Sabrina. Uh, please continue, Miss Panton. Um... Obviously, um, these people like once you're calling on a show and you're saying certain things, they just think um, you're probably um choosing you want to see you. You're probably um, you're probably like because probably you like this player. You probably are you talk about this player, but they say no, your favorite is player. You want to see this player in the national team? No, I said everybody deserve a fair chance because. If there's a player out there and you don't bring in the player, look at the player. How are you gonna know about him? Like, how are you gonna know about that player? Because um, I've been in the um um, I've been hearing everybody uh, talk about um Jaden Shaw. Like, I never really like know exactly how she play, but I've been watching the NWSL and um, I see um. Casey Stoney, um, give her a chance, like give her a contract. I watched her in three games and she did brilliant. And I saw following her up and I'm saying like, I don't know if they want to look at new players. She probably could be the future, but she is already on the US under 20 team. She probably um fit this one out too, just like Ivan Tony. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Um. Maybe. Could be, um, but yeah, let me know. Like I said, guys, if you want to um call in, um, you want to call in, you can definitely um just go ahead and um call in. Definitely. Um, let me see what you guys are saying there in the comments. Yeah, because I'm gonna close out now. I'm gonna head out. <laughs> Don't let the callers um <laughs> chase you away, you know. We're all we're all going to make some sort of a uh, mistake. He probably tuned into the um to the comment I'm section. I'm not like... even um I'm not even <laughs> in the comment section. I'm not even I'm not he's I'm he's not one of here. your guys. He's one of the uh, Manchester United um 
fans there. These these are your set of fans. Um, so okay. No, yeah. I'm not. I wasn't in the comments. I'm like, um, I don't uh, make um comments bother me or them stuff there because um, if you dwell on negative stuff, that you're gonna be negative all your time, all the time negative thing come around you're gonna always um jump i yeah. like to be positive i don't have time for nothing negative i like to be positive all the time <laughs> yeah do, i think i think he negative. um he he probably tuned in um late uh was he saying i stand corrected i use the words coaching staff i still don't get what you're talking about what what do you mean by that you're still confusing me um Trudy Carter was her main topic at first. And if you read the deleted comment, you didn't need to delete the comment. You could have just left it as it is. And uh, apologies if I made a mistake, but you're still confusing me with your first comment because I, I don't really understand what you don't get. I'm saying that um, you said that, where's the comment? See, you deleted the comment. You shouldn't have deleted the comment because now I can't find the comment because this is why I say don't just delete comments. Just leave it the way it is. Um, you're talking about giving credit to, to coaching um, staff. I was saying to you that, yes, if you're going to be giving credit to um, Lauren Donaldson, also give your credit to um, Vin Blaine as well, ir irrespective of whether you like him or not. But the way you put your first Chris. comment which you have now deleted, I kind of look at, looked at your comment as you're saying that it was Lone Donaldson that carried um, the Riga girls to their second World Cup. So that's what I'm saying. Don't delete your comment next time because you're, you're leaving me confused. But if I made a mistake, um, I apologise. It, it hurts to apologise to you as a Manchester United fan. <laughs> but I apologise. Yes, Miss Panton? Madden, out of your show, um, um, when... When am I getting my shirt? When are you get? If you get the shirt, you can't support Manchester United. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I don't receive the shirt yet. So when I receive it, then I will. Then we will talk. No, that doesn't. That sounds like um, Paul Hall receiving a contract, signing it, and JFF not signing the contract. <laughs> <laughs> No way. That's that's how it sounded. So Jamaican Red Devil, maybe you have to call in because you've confused me. Um, I know in the comment um, section that you guys share your opinions. You, you don't really need to tell me. Good that night, you're... good night, good night, everyone. Or good morning to Crystal. Good night, Miss Panting. Uh, you see now you've you've chased away the caller. Um, no, 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 Red no, Devil. no, no one chased me away. I'm um, <laughs> gonna take some tablets now and relax. Watch some end of yourself football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when your show had finished, I will check in with you. <laughs> All right, then, Miss Panton. Take care. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Good night. Yes, Mr. Red Devil. So I apologize for the mistake that I um, made, but you still haven't given me the clarity. You're going to make me close off on the show and I'm confused. Um, so next time, please don't delete the comment because uh, um, I'm looking at it on the screen that you're looking at it on. And it's obviously been de um, deleted from the um, public screening. So apologies for, um, for the mistake on my behalf. Um, but... Yeah, explain what you mean, cause I I don't get it. I can't even remember the the um the stuff the, the conversation itself, but I just know that I don't understand your comments. I kind of wish you didn't delete it, um, cause I was a little bit confused by it. So if you could add clarity just for my sake, I will um I would greatly appreciate it, please. If it isn't too much trouble for you, even though we support two teams that absolutely hate each other. And mostly, guys, the big um, talking point here is um, Elika Keen and Slavia Prague grabbed two, I should grab two, grab a crucial win in the UEFA Women's Champions League. <laughs> so this is why she wanted to close off on the live stream. Well, it's two Manchester United fans. So if they want to go head to head, hey, I'm not getting in the middle of the both of them. It's the Man United Red Devils going at it with each other. Fire away. Um, so yes, Mr. Red Devil, I do apologize from, from my mistake, but I'm still waiting on you to give me some clarity. 
Um, so please give me some clarity. Uh, Mr. Porter, Blakey, IT Push, um, Solids Coaches Desk, Lee, um, Mullins, Miss Panton, Mr. Reed. Thank you to you guys for dropping some comments there in the comments section. Um, <laughs> you're playing stubborn with me, um, Jamaica Red Devil. Uh, but I'm going to continue with the show and hopefully um, by the time I'm ready to close off, I'm hoping that you would have um, at least, at least um, tidy up that comment there for me because you, you confused me with that one. Um, um, <laughs> it's a love and hate relationship between Arsenal and Manchester United fans. So I don't take nothing um personal. And I hope you guys don't take nothing um personal from my standpoint, um, neither, because it, it really and truly is it does what it says on the tin. It's a love and hate relationship between the both of us. Um all right. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and turn on my shared screen. Where am I going next? I guess I could um close off on the show with a little bit of um athletics there for you guys. So <laughs> Jamaica Red Devil, answer the question from Miss Panton, please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh where am I? Where am I? What do I need? Okay. We're going to go over to Sports Max. Sports Max, I've chosen Sports Max because they have um used maybe one or two of my interviews, um, exclusive interviews, and they've given credit to my work. So they've not only used my work, but they've given credit to it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, not that they need to be receiving any promotion, but hey, I'm going to be using... Um, info from their site because they credit my work so um this one is taken from sports max if you guys want to um go and have a read after me and i'm pretty sure you're familiar with this bit of news here right as it relates to um athletics and our olympic gold medalist um brianna williams so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read through this one for you Drop your comments in the comments section and I'll be back. And I'll give it a read before I close off on tonight's live stream. So there's a headline there for you guys before I forget my manners. Olympic gold medalist Brianna Williams joins Titans International with former coach at a bold, Bolden's blessing. So that's good. Good to know that they're um, still on speaking terms. Good to know that no one has burnt their bridges. It's always some um, positives. So Olympic sprint relay gold medalist Brianna Williams is about to launch a new chapter of her track and field career under the guidance of new coaches to begin the 2022-2023 track season. The 20-year-old star will join Michael Freiter and Gregory Little at the Kingston-based Titans International Track Club with the blessings of her now former coach and mentor at a Bolden. Uh, she retains her agent, HIS Sports, and manages Leap Marketing. We're going to hear from our Mr. Bolden here. A couple words coming from the former coach or Williams' former coach. And he says, Brianna, by her own admission, has grown comfortable over the last season and needs to be more challenged. So with my blessings and encouragement, she'll be joining Michael Freighter and Gregory Little's group. Um, like that professional, no fussing, no sulking uh, from Mr. Bolden. That's what we like to see. And he continues by saying, from the beginning, she and I knew 
I'd have to hand her off to someone who could coach her full time. And as she turns 21 soon, now is the time. So that's pretty unselfish there from um, her former coach. Could have played hardball, could have been manipulative. You'd be surprised there's so many man manipulative um, coaches across a number of sports. So it's nice to see that um, Mr. Bolden there isn't standing in the way or didn't try to stand in the way of Brianna Williams um, doing as he should, um, giving her the right bit of advice to better her career in the long run. And he continued by saying, this is the next chapter in her development and I'll continue to advise her. Sorry, I'll continue to advise and guide her as I have since she was 10. So 10 years 10 years, they're a decade of mentoring um, from um, the former coach of Brianna Williams. And read the rest of that article there for you guys. Like I said, this one is from Sports Max, so please do feel free to go ahead and give it a read. Um, it says, Bolden has been Williams's mentor and coach for the past decade. During that time, she ran a world under 15 age group, one uh, 100 meters record of 11.13 in 2018. That same year, she won the she won three gold medals over the 100, 200, and 400 meters in the U17 category at the Carifta Games and was named winner of the Austin Sealy Award. Later that year, at the age of 16 and competing at the U20 World Championship in Finland, Williams won the 100 metres in a time of 11.16 before setting a new national U20 record of 22.50 while winning the 200 metres. In doing so, she broke the previous U20 record held by the iconic Veronica Campbell-Brown. Williams won three gold medals in the at the 2019 Carifta Games, but according to the young star, it was time for a change. And she said, I'm excited about this new chapter and happy to be training in Jamaica. I have to thank Coach Atto for how much he has done for me and my career so far. He will always be a father figure. So that's lovely, guys. Like I said earlier on, no bridges burned with this announcement, keeping it nice, professional and clean, as they should. I mean, a decade of friendship, you want to keep that going. And uh, I'm going to read out the last bit of that um, uh, report there, guys. Again, from uh, Sports Max, Titans International boasts an impressive roster that includes Yoan Blake, the 2011 world 100 meters champion and second fastest man of all time and Akeem Blake the 2022 NACA 100 meters champion who also who was also a semi-finalist at the 100 meters sorry in the 100 meters at the 2022 world championship in Oregon I'm pretty sure we were all watching the um Oregon games um the world championship next year we have world championships taking place in hungary not sure if any of you go into that one um be interesting to know drop some comment in the comment section and let me know under the guidance of freighter and little kumar bailey cole the 2014 commonwealth games 100 meters champion has he has resurrected um after years of injury definitely resurrected there um guys i agree with that after injuries and illness threatened to end his once promising career williams a nike athlete is a digital brand ambassador and a brand ambassador for grace food so that is that there with your um conversation on your update i should say giving you guys a little bit of an update on track and field um, they got the gloves out. The Man United fans have the gloves out. They got their gloves out in the comment section, guys. I like this. Who's gonna win? Are you backing Mr. Red Devil or are you backing Miss Red Devil? Things aren't looking good at home for both of these guys. They're going neck and neck in the comment section. See what they're saying. <laughs> okay, so clearly, um, uh, Mr. Red Devil is leaving me hanging. He's just gonna, he's not gonna give me the clarity. Um, I've been asking him for a bit of clarity, but he's not giving it to me tonight. But he wants to play hardball with me, and I'm, I'm here for the long run. Garvin, did I pronounce your name right? Hope I did. Thank you. I think you're new to my platform. I don't think I've seen you around here before, but thank you, sir. 
game plan players change with different opponents what are they talking about let me have a little quick read <laughs> oh god oh god a bit feisty in the comment section tonight guys keep it up um so yes i've given you guys some info some update news and update there on um let's go through that we've touched on alika keen and uh kayla mccoy for their respective clubs so that is slavia prague and also for rangers both ladies um competed in champions league between tuesday and wednesday for their respective clubs also touched on trudy carter she's now playing in top flight of women's football in Spain touched on the North London derby this weekend. We've got the North London derby, Arsenal playing host to Tottenham Hotspur. So that is Drew Spence and Rebecca Spencer taking on Arsenal at the Emirates. And on Sunday, we have Super Sunday. It will be Chelsea taking on Bunnishaw and Manchester City. So it almost slipped my mind. I'm not going anywhere just yet. I have another um another player that I want to talk to you guys about, right? So let's go over to Sweden. Let's see what Sweden's saying. I want to hear you guys' opinion. If you want to call in, please do go ahead and do exactly that. If you don't want to call in, um, no love loss. I'll probably whiz through this one um, if that's the case. Let me know what you guys think of Sweden. And you know the reason why we're going to Sweden. That is the country temporary country belonging to Chinelu Asha. She's plays her football for Ike Football Dam. And we're about to um look at how things is um looking. Again, another player that I uh, cover over the um Reggae Girls Weekend of Action Review. So you should be familiar with how things is looking in her neck of the woods. And it's not pretty reading, is it? Sitting rock bottom of their table there. You can see 20 games played only eight points on the board. And the reason why I'm looking at um, Chinelu Asher, looking at Chinelu Asher and the um, Swedish top division, this is top flight football, by the way, guys, in Sweden. And the um, reason why I wanted to um, talk about Chinelu with you guys is when I was looking at the uh, announcement for Trudy Carter, I was thinking uh, it just reminded me of... Um, what we've previously discussed on other live streams that now I think now is the time for um Chinelu Asha to look elsewhere. Um, I would even jump the gun and say just to leave the league um entirely and test the waters somewhere else. We know that she's no stranger to playing in other countries. I think at senior level, um, she's played for three different, sorry, five different countries at our uh, senior level, um, Kazakhstan or Kazakhstan, uh, Colombia, USA, Norway, and now Sweden. So it's not, I mean, switching countries, testing waters in another country isn't exactly um, uncommon to her. Seems to be something she fancies a challenge. She seems like um, one of those players that fancy a challenge. So I'll be keen. I mean, if we if we um, look at that league there, the season's pretty much coming to an end soon, guys. If we just do a little bit of a backtracking, you can see um, those games are coming to an end. These are a couple of two, um, a two, two be decided game in October. Um, again, they've already played 20 games. So I would love for um for Chinelu Asha to test the waters somewhere else, a bit like what we've seen with today's announcement. I should say yesterday's announcement um, regarding Trudy Carter. I would love to see Chinelu um, exit that league in Sweden and find herself a new country and a new home. Um, we have seen it with her in the past at um, senior level. And I'm pretty sure at some point she will be on the move. I think she's like 29 now, guys. So approaching the latter years of her playing career. And I'm sure she wants to sign off on a high with fancy scene her um, closing off the latter years of her um 
football career with some trophies and medals in her back pocket. She's one of those players that is most certainly fan favourite. I'm sure for her club, uh, but most certainly, most certainly for her country. So let's just see what happens. Let's keep an eye on um, Chinilu Asher and how things pan out in um, Sweden. I could bank my money, bank my last penny and say that she should be on the move. Um, if it's not something that she's considering, someone needs to like give her a little bit of a push and let her um test the waters somewhere else, especially, especially with the um World Cup approaching, steadily approaching. I'm gonna be um siding with um uh, Miss Panton on this one. I am in favor, in favor, guys, of just say two more windows where we bring through um potentially uh not potentially but yeah go ahead and bring through some new faces. But I think uh, I would like to say that at the start of next year, so you're 2023 where you're just looking down the flank, sorry, down the tunnel. I don't really want to be looking at um new players unless we have no choice but to um recruit new players. But I think when you're looking at the final stretch going into um our second successive World Cup, it's all about fine tuning. It's all about um tapping into those muscle memories. It's all about um sorting our organization because even now to um to the present i think we still need to work on our, how we organize ourselves on the field of play don't have a problem with the girls off the field of play in terms of how they carry themselves their professionalism but on the field of play i, I need to see our identity i haven't seen our identity yet i'm um, going to be fair to the gaffer um, because he does need time to um readjust yes people can argue and say that he's been with the the team before but that's in a totally different capacity so we can't even um use that argument against him because it wouldn't make sense now he is firmly in the driving seat and um yes i think we do need to give him time to um look at as many players as he wants to but i would definitely say um early next year I'm not really in favor of looking at new players. I want to look at the players that we have in the pipeline, even looking at the underage um, age group as well. Buckley, that's a player that um, I think is worthy, definitely think she's worthy of being looked at, of being tested in the um, in the uh, senior side. Let's not forget that um, Jodie Brown was only a little baby. She was 16. 16 years old there's nothing sweet 16 about her at that age um she was um twisting and turning women who were twice her age um and she was having fun picking up the um young player of the tournament award in the um CONCACAF women's championship uh for the last cycle for the last World Cup cycle so not this current qualifying period she was only 16 then so for me age it's not really um, that important, is it? If you're good enough to play, you should be playing irrespective of your age. So whether you're deemed too young, too old, once you've got it in your locker, the bare minimum you deserve is an opportunity. Um, we saw that with um, the young um, Jody Brown and she held herself to a um, high standard and she delivered and she's been delivering um, when used fairly when presented with the equality and the equity. So yeah, I'll be in favor of um, looking at um, Buckley as well. I've always, I cannot wait for the day to come where we have Buckley and um, Brown in the same team. I think that is going to be nightmare on show for the um, opposition. Great move for Trudy Spain as yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for her. She was at Jintra, for those of you who are wondering. So that is um the Lithuanian league. So I mean, what are you going to choose? Lithuania, no disrespect to Lithuania. We have to be grateful to them because they gave her an opportunity. Um, but what are you choosing? Lithuania or um or Spain? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? So we need to be looking at, um, I'm saying we, the gaffer needs to be looking at Buckley. Um, me and you're going to talk about that, um, Sabrina. Um, we definitely need to be um, looking at Buckley. Let me go through my notes and see if I've forgotten anything for you guys. Uh, 
Have I forgotten anything? Um, let's see what you guys um Um, let's see. I think I pretty much covered um everything, guys. I think I pretty much covered um everything on my notes. You might have to go back and watch the um the um the uh um the Conquer Calf um qualifying um championship for our underage group there, um Sabrina, um and look at Barkley. Might see if I can find a particular game. It should still be still be on um she should it still it should still be on YouTube. I did a couple live uh watch along. Um, but I think Buckley is a player that you would like. Um, she does. She reminds me of. She reminds me of um of Brown. If that makes sense to anyone, then let me know. But she one hundred percent reminds me of Brown. See if I can actually um remind you of the game. Let's see what game was it. What game was it? Um, what game am I referring to? She's had a couple of um, solid um, performances. What game am I referring to? Let's see if I can find it quickly. It's not coming up on my um on my screen. I might have to um go back and look at my videos, uh, Sabrina, because it's not coming up on my screen. That sucks. Uh, what game am I referring to here? Um, let's see. If we get something up. <clears throat> Trying to find some highlights for you, but yeah, trust my wording on this. That like she is um a top player in the making. Might try and see if I can find um a, a highlight for you um and send it to you via WhatsApp because sometimes Google does this thing where after the games have been played, it's like they it then gets removed from the first page. I guess that comes down to the number of searches, maybe, but it's not on their first page no more. not there at all so yeah i'm gonna have to uh, maybe send you a video in instead but you're definitely uh familiar with her there's no way you can't be familiar with buckley you must be familiar with her i cannot believe i can't find it this is ridiculous um let's see what match was it let me go and see on my um let me try something else before i close off bear with me guys let's see if i can try and point sabrina in the right direction let me turn this down because i don't want to make any noise This was all the way back in May. So um this was the I think this one was the um the U seventeens um Cockerguff Women's Championship. I'm just trying to find something. For the love of God, I cannot find it, but It was um probably March, April, May. Between April and May, Sabrina. 
check between 80, um, April and May for the U17s. Just see my comment. Yes. Jamaican Red Devil, what did you do to my friend? You're making her log off. <laughs> Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so Sabrina, check the um the U seventeens um from between April and May. Let me just actually let me play something from one of my um just in case you guys are wondering how good is uh Buckley. You guys can listen to something here from Mr. Prince, Mr. Liverpool. So let me go ahead and um play something to you for you guys. Just to say, I think in this one he was talking about Buckley. You're not looking at Buckley. Buckley is literally stunting out here. She's pretty much walking past players, right? The Jamaican players look look fast. The Jamaican players look fit. The only thing we are seeing where they are lacking in is the IQ. I've never seen a Jamaican team prepared this way, right? Where we can actually sit down and say, wow, this team might actually give the U.S., and the Canada a bit of problems. We have never had that, right? Normally, we just expect the youth team to just get steamrolled by a Canadian and a US team. But no, we are saying this team have a bit of bite in them. So therefore, those persons are doing something good. You're not looking at Buckley. So Buckley yes, literally... in case you don't know about Buckley, Buckley stunts when she's on the, on the field of play. Like I said, she reminds me of... Um, of Jody in terms of her style of play and this fearless um attitude that she has uh, professional neat tidy player so the gaffer i would love if he gave um buckley um a little run out with the um senior side i'm not saying take her to the world cup but look um jody brown um she done bits for us at age 16 she handled herself at age 16 and i can see the similarities between jody and buckley right so yeah um i'm in favor of her being tested or uh, given a fair um shout in the um in the run up to the world cup i rather us at this point like when we get to january and beyond i rather just look at our underage um um our um u20s or our u17s players just look at them players who are already part of a system players are already um in the pipeline rather than bringing in an entire um new crop of faces and again that doesn't mean i wouldn't want new players in january and um, as we edge towards the um, the latter preparation stage. If they can make a difference and we absolutely need them, then why not bring them on board? Um, so I think I have covered everything, almost two hours. I don't know how you guys managed to um, keep me here all the time, all the time, all the time you guys managed to keep me here. Um, so I am going to be closing off now. I've said everything that needs to be said. Um, before I forget my manners, massive thank you to there in the oh sorry, I almost forgot my manners with you. Um you're referring to to Alison, and that's another topic. Um, and I was going to discuss um Alison. Um, I've done it on a number of my uh, live streams before. That's another player that I think <laughs> Ma, you leave Sabrina alone in a <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, um, what's I gonna say? Yeah, that's another player there that I don't know if she's wondering if she had any thoughts of maybe would have made sense to stay at Roma because obviously when she was at Roma, she was playing week in, week out, would have had the chance to taste some Champions League football as well. Um, and it's approaching one year since she signed for Roma. Uh, not Roma, um, Angels, um, Angel City over there in the USL, top flight of women's football in um, the United States. Uh, so it's almost a year since she put pen to paper and then she had to just um, wait a little while longer with Roma before moving and playing for Angel City because by then um, there was no football being played um with um angel city angel city are a new new club there guys 
then in the NWSL founded in 2020. So founded in 2020. So, um, <laughs> like I said, on this program, we're going to be making mistakes. I make mistakes. If you guys make mistakes, it's not really a big deal. It's such as life. All right, guys, I'm going to be closing off. I'm going to check on Miss Panton because um, Mr. Man United, you have caused Miss Panton to switch off on the channel. Um, so... Thank you to you guys there for tuning into the live stream. I hope you enjoyed it. The headline reads as follows. Alika Keen and Slavia Prague grab crucial UEFA Women's Champions League win. Right? And that is two wins in the bag for two reggae girls. Um, not Sorry. Not two wins in the bag, two Champions League games in the bag for two of our reggae girls. See, another mistake being made. Um... Kayla McCoy, she grabbed a double um, against Benfica, subsequently losing that match 3-2. Um, on a positive note, um, that was their debut in the Champions League on home soil for Rangers and Kayla McCoy. And we have another win in the bag for Slavia Prague and Elika Keen. So... Work to be done. Plenty of work to be done in the second leg for both girls and their respective clubs. Hopefully they can get the job done and march, march on to the next one. So I'm going to be signing out. If I don't see you between now and the end of the week, I hope that you have a lovely week. And if I don't see you over the weekend, not really sure why that would be, but I hope you have a smashing weekend when it comes. Um, it's just the devil. <laughs> oh, God. Um, right then, guys, I'm going to be signing off and I'm going to leave it there with the headline. Elika Keen and Slavia Prague grab crucial UEFA Women's Champions League win. Right. And if you missed the show, if you're just coming in, sorry, it's a little bit too late. I'm going to my bed. It's 18 past 1 a.m. So I'm going to, by the way, get used to me um, doing live streams round about um, maybe between 4 and 5 p.m. Jamaica time, right? I know I usually go later than that, but things are changing my end with regards to my times and when I can do streams and when I can't. So keep, keep your eyes peeled between your 4 and 5 o'clock if I'm going to be doing a live stream because I can't go um, too further beyond those particular time. Cheerio, mate. Good night. Um, you, whatever you're having for dinner, eat for both of us, okay? I might go and have myself some. Actually, I shouldn't. That's a bad habit. I did have a late dessert last night and I'm, I'm not going to do it again tonight. That's poor behavior. Mr. Tennessee Lewis, good day, sir. Good evening. You have come as, a, as I'm about to close off on the live stream. Um, hope you think is well with you in your neck of the woods. If you're new to the channel, please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, go ahead and hit the like button as well. Run up the likes on this particular video for me, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure um, speaking to each of you in the comments section. Mr. Manchester United, be on your best behavior next time. You didn't give me the clarity. You got an apology out of me, but you didn't give me no clarity. So um, we'll see for next time round. Right, guys, if you're out and about, I hope that you um, get home safe. What is it, Mr. Tennessee Lewis? I've pretty much said everything that needs to be said. I've been sat here for almost two hours. We've spoken about... Alika Keen, we're talking about Kayla McCoy, Bunny Shaw, Drew Spence, Rebecca Spencer, Trudy Carter, um, Chinelu Asha, Tiffany Cameron. We've touched on a couple of the players tonight. So, yeah, now it's time for me to love you and leave you guys. My bro, how are you? How you doing? Yeah, you need to tell them fresh because sometimes they like to play about. So you need to tell them to stop playing games and do what they need to do. Um, but so far, so good. 
let's see we will link <laughs> you must be talking to fresh or sabrina because they are the i have a lot of um i say a lot i have quite a few uh man united um subscribers don't i probably more than i realize why is that no complaints i'm not um complaining it is what it is I hope you're here next time. After you confused me earlier on in the show, forcing me to make multiple mistakes, I hope that you are um, you're here next time round. And behave yourself, and you leave Miss Panton alone. All right, uh, guys. I'm going to see you on the next live stream. Again, if you're out and about, I hope that you make it home safe and sound. And don't forget to go ahead. <laughs> The Arsenal red. Yes, the Arsenal. I don't know what this says, Mr. Fresh. I don't know what that says. I can't read. So I don't know what that says. And um, it does look fabulous when it is the red and white of Arsenal. You are absolutely correct. By the way, you, Fresh and Sabrina, you guys can go ahead and get this jersey, you know. Tell me your sizes. What's your, what's your sizes? Let me know your sizes and we can um sort something out for each of you. All right. Probably probably some of you probably bought it under the quiet and don't want to say nothing. Um, let's see who is online. Let's see who you guys can go and watch after. So coach's desk is online. He was online. Where is he? I could have sworn coach's desk was online, but it's not telling me he was online. Why is it not showing that he's online? Okay, so he's online, guys. Um, he's talking about um Brianna Williams. So he's talking about uh athletics. So if you guys want to make your way over to Coach's desk, he's the only one that is apparently online, um, as things stand. So you can go ahead and make your way over there. If he's wearing that Manchester United um jersey, please bow him and give him some bottles for me. Please and thank you. All right, guys, that's it. I'm gonna go. Um and until next time, enjoy the rest of your day. If you're starting the day off, then have a wonderful day. If I don't see you between now and the rest of the week, um, enjoy your week. And if I don't see you over the weekend, have a smashing weekend. God bless. Take care. I'm John Barnes, and you're watching Tarawa TV with Crystal Davis.